Hey everyone, it's TJ90 here. We've got another Spirit of 97 episode. We're into our sixth season, I believe it is now, with Borussia Dortmund. We've got the end of last season to catch up on. We've got a couple of transfers to look at. And uh, yeah, we've had a very excellent, excellent start to the season. We've got a, a big league game up against our uh, rivals in Leipzig today. And we've also got the first Champions League game of the group. We've got quite a nice Champions League draw. And the rest of the Champions League draw itself is quite interesting. So uh, yeah, without, without further ado, everyone, let's go. That's right, everyone. We've got a massive Friday night fixture against RB Leipzig in the, uh, in the Bundesliga. Um, we are currently sitting top of the league, tied with points with Bayern Munich. Leipzig are currently sitting in seventh. Um, we have been in inspired form since I last saw you. We carried on a lot of our form from the league uh, last season into this season so far. Um, but before I properly look into that, you know what to do. Do me a favour. Drop a like if you haven't already. Uh, comment brick wall because I'll tell you why if you haven't. If you if you want to leave any comment, comment brick wall and I'll tell you why in a second. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, do us a favour. While you're leaving a like, just click that little subscribe button. Um, you can always flick off the notifications if you don't want to get bombarded by notifications when I upload videos. But it means a lot to me. So yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Now, we're actually going to start with looking at last season's fixtures as to why we're going with Brick Wall. So, I saw you after we lost 3-0 in the semi-final of the, the Deutsche Pokal, which Bayern then went on to win. Um... Obviously, we then beat Cologne 2 0. And uh, we then beat uh, Armenia Bielefeld 4 0 and Hertha Berlin 1 0. We won the league uh, as expected. But as you can see, um, after that Hoffenheim game in the league, we didn't concede any more goals uh, between then and the end of the season. And as far as this season goes in the league, we have carried straight off from there. 4-0, 2-0, 2-0. So what actually that actually meant was we actually set a Bundesliga record for uh, 10 games in a row without conceding. Now, I expect that to to stop here against Leipzig. Uh, I would have thought they would probably manage to get a goal past us. Although I've just seen they've not got Gonzalo Ramos, who is probably one of their main players. Um, so they'll be relying on Yusuf Poulsen up top. Elsewhere, um, yeah, we won the Super Cup 3-1 against Bayern Munich. Um, we um, then battered ASV Cham, um, some regional, let's see, be some regional team. Oh, that, that doesn't even tell me that they're in any division at all. Um, yeah, battered them 8-0. It was 7-0 at half time, so we actually, you know, we only scored one more in the uh, in the second half. Uh, Vlajevic has been, was in inspired form pre-season and obviously got the four uh, there against Cham. But um, then after that, those three games after that, he's kind of made way for Makoko, to be honest with you. We played him against Frankfurt. He didn't really do anything. Um, Mbappe, obviously, still in the goals. Uh, Delicht, Bastoni as well, still getting the goals, like, you know, from set pieces, still doing a really good job there. Uh, so that has been really, really good. Uh, we'll look at transfer. Just going to put my face up here so it's nice and out the way. In terms of incomings, we had the massive one, which was Luca Nets, uh, which I did touch on last time. That was already secured um, before uh, we finished the season last time. We signed this guy, Haisam Hassan. I've never come across him. My scouts found him. He was someone who they literally just picked up, told me he was transfer listed. And I thought, you know what? He's a good uh, wing option. He's a good backup option to play out on the wings. Um, literally just to come in if Adiemi's having a poor game or if he's injured or if Mbappe's knackered. He's got some really decent stats, really good dribbling. He's fairly quick. He's got good flair. Um, he's just someone who we're hoping can just do a job for us. He's on quite a cheap wage. And as you can see, he didn't really cost us much. We also made a couple of other signings, uh, a couple of youngsters. Jan Calvacanti, he was someone, he's a regen from Sao Paulo, who, again, scouts found, and he looks really good. He's 19, got him for relatively cheap, and he's already worth like three to four times what we bought him for. Uh, he stayed on loan at Sao Paulo. Um, Paul Pogba, interesting one. I'll explain my reasoning soon, just to show his stats. Obviously, he's all got the declining arrows at the moment, but I was surprised that physically he was still actually quite strong in terms of his pace. Um, obviously, his technicals and his mentals are, you know, are generally going to stay quite good. Basically, we actually uh, bid from it in the January window. 
Um, just as like another backup option to play in midfield when like Erdegaard, Verts, and Garvey were really struggling last season. Um, that really sort of took down our um, like you know our sort of creative options in midfield. We really struggled, and then they were tired. Obviously, we lost a lot of our engine room. Um, so yeah, we bid for him in the January because he had submitted a transfer request, but. Man United wanted like quite a lot of money for him, like for his age. I think they wanted like over 20, 25 mil, which in modern day terms isn't a lot. But when he was like 32, 33, um, and you know, obviously already on the decline, and he only had 18 months left on his deal, I was like, I don't need him that desperately. So I was like, I'll try again in the summer. And we managed to get him for about eight and a half mil. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of happy with what he's done so far. We brought him on for his first game, uh, in the Super Cup, um, and he got the uh, got an assist for Makoko to make it 2-0. Literally picked the ball up, drove down the wing with the great cross in, and, he sc- and uh, Makoko scored at the far post. Benjamin Larenas, he is another um, regen, uh, new gen that my scouts found. And I was like, bloody hell. Like, 17 finishing, he's 18. Um, he could do with being a little bit quicker. He's got good passing. They're saying his natural role is a, is a deep line forward. In my experience, I've not had a huge amount of success with deep line forwards in the past. Um, I generally like to have my sort of strikers running in behind rather than like purely hold up and winning the ball and stuff. But he's massive as well, so we can get him to work on his heading. He will be a real threat uh, in the air. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with him. And then uh, the other one we signed was this guy Hector from Barcelona. Uh, he is someone who, again, he was just a you know just an option we wanted to cover for Mbappe if needed. Um, young player, someone who can come on off the bench um, or start against someone like the lesser teams and just do a job for us. Um, in he, we started him in the cup game and he got a hat trick. Um, but what was what was annoying was Barcelona put in. I'll show you a non-negotiable uh, buyback clause. It might not show it in here of uh, of twenty two and a half million, which is valid until twenty twenty nine. Now, obviously, if they choose to enact that, we'll still make a profit on him. We'll still make about 13, 14 mil profit on him, but it'll be annoying because he'll probably be worth a lot more than that by that point. But equally, as we have touched on, this is possibly and probably will be the last season of this series. Um, you know, it's Champions League or nothing now, really, this season. So it might be that if we do indeed end the series um, this season, even if we do lose the Champions League, we will probably really never have to worry about that, <laughs> that buyback clause in the future. Uh, outgoings. We did sell a few fringe players. Namdi Collins, we managed to sell for nine and a half million for Dusseldorf. Uh, he was kind of reaching his, I would say, his, his peak levels of his development, really. He was sort of tapering off. He probably wasn't really going to go past the three and a half star mark. Um, so we managed to get a bit of money for him. Same with uh, Noah and Bamba. Um, and uh, yeah. He, he was someone who was who was good, but was n- no better than the the new gen centre halves we had. And then a few of the other players, our young players like Otto Duholtz, uh, we've loaned him out to Bielfeld. And Frank Kessler is someone who could potentially be a really good centre half for us. He came from our youth intake. He's gone out on loan to Hamburg, who are in our divisions, which is really important. Um, and someone else, I saw someone else. Where is he? Might not show it actually because he was in technically probably considered as a Bundesliga two team. And that was Salvatore Di Meo. Uh, let me see if I can find him. It's not going to show him in the transfers. Anyway, yeah, we sold this youngster who also come through the um, the development squad. His potential was like two and a half stars. I was like, he really doesn't look that great. Yeah, but he was worth a decent chunk of money. He's, you know, I was thinking he's not going to come good. We'll offer him out. Um, we offered him out for like 13, 14 mil or something. And then, like, we were getting notifications saying, like, oh, PSG are interested, Man City are interested, Man United are interested. And I was thinking, are, like, are we just, like, completely just misjudging these players if these teams are looking at him? And I went back into his stats. I was like, he's really nothing special. Like, he's got, like, a few key stats which are really good. But otherwise, he, he you know, he's probably never really going to amount to anything that's going to, you know, substantial is going to make our first team. Uh, and we got about, like, 14 mil for him from Man United. And I was like, you know what? Have him. He's just going to sit in your reserves anyway. Um, so, yeah, he went, just raised up a bit more money. Uh, in terms of, like, big names, no one left. Uh, Arsenal bid 105 mil for Vlajevic, which we actually accepted, but he didn't want to join them. They also then bid 100 mil for Adeyemi, but we just rejected it kind of outright, really, without really thinking too much about it because he wasn't interested. So I was like, there's no point because he's not going to want to go to them. Um, Liverpool bid for Makoko, we rejected it. 
Nuno Mendes isn't very happy because Real Madrid bid a paltry £18 million for him. Now, he's worth 32 and a half. We've tried to negotiate, and I think the highest they would go would be about 30 mil. Bear in mind, we signed this player for 40 mil, so I at least want to recoup what we got for him. He's a better player now than when we signed him. And um, I appreciate, yeah, as we touched on last time, his development has kind of plateaued, and he's probably not really going to get much better than he is at the moment. But, um, yeah, um, he, he wasn't happy about us blocking that. And I was like, well, tough. Like, you've got a rescores of 94 mil. I know I'm probably not going to get that for you, but... If you want to leave, they've got to offer us more money and he wasn't having it. But you know what? They didn't come back in for him, so he stayed. Um, and I think that's it in terms of admin. I've got the game against Leipzig all set up and ready to go. You will notice that Vlajevic is starting. Uh, that's because Makoko is just a little bit tired after international duty. Um, and then obviously goes out saying Anana at the back, Kimish, Delict, Bastoni, Dejani starting because Nets and Mendes uh, both picked up minor knocks at the end of international duty adi amy's back in he has been injured since the start of the season so he's just been making sub appearances verts is in over gavi um mbappe obviously uh the guard and then brugelman's making up the midfield um drop your thoughts below do you think that we can finally i mean to be fair i say do you think we finally have what it takes from the champions league we should have done that before we should have done that before now the team's definitely been good enough uh it's really frustrating that we've not done it yet Um, but yeah, we're playing against a Leipzig team who still have Danny Olmo. Still have Shabazzlai. We did debate buying him, but he would have been worth about 45 mil. And he would have probably only really been a backup player. I just didn't see the point in spending 45 mil on someone who's going to be a rotation option. And yeah, they've got Kaiki on the right and Kivarach Kalia on the left. And because Gonzalo Ramos is injured, they're playing Yusuf Paulson up top. Um, they've not got, I don't think they've got the likes of Halstenberg anymore or Angelino. Um, they've still got Lima. But they haven't got, obviously they haven't got Open Meccano because he, he actually went in like real life. Mukiel, we signed from them. Canate obviously went to Liverpool. So there, it's a very, I would say, a average defence that they've got. Like Bremer's not great. Like, you know, he is, he is not a top tier defender I don't think at this stage of the game normal service resumed I was not on that obviously I moved that out of the way for to look into the transfers and uh, forgot to move it back for everything else uh, I also realized before that uh, my mic was slightly off to one side, which I moved back during recording one of the, la the last sort of segment. So hopefully the first few minutes, I you can still hear me fine. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, good tackle from Tajani, but him and Anana, I think, probably got in each other's way. Safe hands from Anana there. I do want to see a bit more from the team, though. A bit more creativity, please. Verts and Erdegaard tired already. Lovely ball by Tijani to Erdegaard. What can he do? Crosses it. Vlajevic. Good near post header, but he was always going to struggle to score from there. He'd have to have headed it down into the ground, I think. Oh, yeah. Interestingly enough, um, for those of you who are interested... The 2026 World Cup was won by England beating Italy on penalties. Um, managed by none other than Sean Dyche. England won playing a very, very classic 4-4-2. Oh. Um, with Greenwood and Kane, I think, up top. And Tammy Abraham playing as a right mid. Not even a right winger, a right mid. Like, flat 4-4-2. I was like, respect Sean Dyche. You just stuck with it on the biggest stage possible. Good header away by Bastoni. Leipzig proving difficult, as you would expect, from one of the better teams in the division. 
Nice. Come on, Dushan. What can you do? Plays it to Mbappe. Back to Erdogan. Just over the bar. Like, I actually thought it was going to be worse than that, but it literally just skimmed over. Come on, Killian. Yet to see enough from the team, I feel. Like, I don't feel like we've created anything of any real significance. Adi Amy not having a good game. Erdegaard, very tired now. So I might have to take Erdegaard off at half time. And bring on Garvey, maybe. Let Garvey do the run in the midfield. Good head. Adi Amy easily beaten. Kaiki was probably offside, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, as you can see, we did make that change. Erdegaard off, Gavi on. Tajani feeds it down from Mbappe. Can we start the half super strong? The answer is no. Come on, Kareem. Nice. Come on, Solomon. Come on. Gavi, Mbappe. Still got, still got it with a ah, terrible pass by Mbappe. Really quite poor. Mbappe uh, was top scorer and top assist provider in the league last season. Uh, there goes our clean sheet record. And Anana got the most clean sheets, helped by us not conceding a goal. And then that was really quite shocking. So Kaiki gets the ball, brings it down. Who does he play it to? Wambasaka pings it right over the top. Poulsen breaks off of Delish and scores. That is terrible, right? Had Amy having a, stock, a shocker. Where's um, Hassan? He can come on. Mbappe struggling, right? That's just, you know what? Stuff it. We're just going all out. Berating them. Vivic just offers so little. So, so little. Like, I, that's what, I was more than happy to sell him in the summer. Because he just, sometimes he just, he's non-existent in some games, honestly. Like, look at this. He's done naff all in a massive game for us. It's just, I know he's knackered. I can't really play him as a pressing forward. He's knackered. Why is the referee, like, standing there? Like, he is way away from, like, the action then. Yeah, I go more direct. Higher line. Stop faffing around playing for set pieces. Even though we are good for, for them, then, like, just let them happen naturally. Come on, Paul. What a pass. That is a great pass by Pogba to Mbappe, and he makes an absolute hash of that. Leipzig have played this game very well. The referee is still standing up by our goal line. Why are you going there? Like, get in the heart of the action. He's going to get in the way. Uh, yeah, Leipzig have executed this very well, this game plan, I think. Um, they've been really solid defensively, and they just created their one chance, and they took it. Took it really, really nicely through Paulson. Like, look at that. More shots than us, um, yeah. We just do not seem to be able to get in behind at all. Doesn't help when, you know, players are not having, like, your forward players are not having good games, and obviously they're now knackered. I was going to say, it looks like a goal kick. Looks like he smashed it off our player, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, just keep berating and hope that we can scrap a draw with two minutes to go.
just what is this? They're just absolutely just dictating the game. Dictating the game. Um, Delisht and Bastoni do not seem to know who they're supposed to be marking. They're just sort of running around like headless chickens have. They've got like a 7.4 and a 7. You're just going to let him do that to you, Gavi? Yeah. And then you go and give away the foul. Of course you do. Right. Dushan's getting fined. And you know what? Yeah. This is this is why we've been playing Makoko. Can't count on him. Just cannot count on him at all. Hey, everyone. So it's Champions League time. And um, yeah, as I was saying, some of the draws, like the groups are quite interesting. Look at this one. Group A. Sporting, Eindhoven, Spartak Moscow and Leipzig. I would take any one of those teams in the uh, the knockout round. I don't think we'd get Leipzig though because if they came second, assuming we come first, uh, because they're from Germany. Kind of like English teams don't play each other. Kind of that general vibe, I think. Celtic, Inter, Sociedad, Bruges, any of them I would happily play. Um, we have beaten Inter since we lost on penalties in the Champions League to them, I believe. Um, I'm sure we did. I'm sure we beat them. Um, same applies with Bayern Munich. We probably wouldn't play them, but even if we did, we'd still probably beat them, I think. Liverpool are the only team I fear, as you know. They're the only team I fear. Monaco, Copenhagen, yeah, no problem. Atalanta... Fine with that. Spurs, fine with that. Kiev will be fine with that. Real Madrid, we've beaten plenty of times. We'll be fine with that. Um, yeah, it's such a random... Like, some of these groups are just so random. Like, I feel like there's the potential for... You know, there's... In a lot of the groups, there's not, like, a clear... Like, two clear favourites, with the exception of maybe Bayern and Liverpool. Because I feel like... Was the Atalanta here? Spurs or Madrid, they could go through. Kiev could sneak it if, you know, they can get, like, a scrappy draw... Man City, Juve, are probably the favourites in that one, but you can't rule out Gladbach over Juve. Our group, Milan, Salzburg, Shakhtar, really, that should be us and Milan, but you never know with Salzburg, or even Shakhtar, to be fair. Milan, we should be beating, we've never lost to them. United, Villarreal, Stade Rene or Ajax, that could potentially really be any one of them. Now, Man United actually have just looked like they've just beaten Ajax 4-1. Um... But again, you know, theoretically, Ajax could go through that group in second. United, ugh, we've lost to them in extra time previously, but they might not even go through. Villarreal or Stade Rene, yes. PSG, Barca, you know, Barcelona knocked us out in extra time once. Uh, PSG, we've had some mixed results against. But again, you know, we could probably beat either of them if we uh, if push came to shove. So, um, yeah, just to find the draws is quite interesting. The group's quite interesting. So Mbappe is just recovering from a tight hamstring, so he is on the bench, and we've pretty much completely changed the squad from last time out. Uh, but it's still a very strong squad. Makoko back at back uh, back in the lineup up top. Hector on the left, Gavi, Hassan, Pogba playing as an advanced playmaker to be gimmick because that is part of his one of his promises. That's the role he wanted to play. Kamara is a youngster who we signed. He was out on loan at Montpellier last season. Um, just another hard working ball winning defender uh, midfielder really um pk on the right nets on the left will play him as a wing back supporting wing back uh and then bookspot and ramos uh in defense two of our um new gen defenders and then anana obviously without fail in goal um and then i think we're gonna leave it at that now subs plenty of decent options on the bench so yeah let's go so yeah need to really push on Get a strong start here against a Shakhtar team who have got a good little collection of players, really. Um, they've got Nicola Pepe, Patson Daka, um, Tom Amunier, obviously we had him at the start of the save. Oh, nearly a very good ball by Pogba. Pogba's range of passing is still ridiculously good. As you would expect. That Nathan Ake as well. Good little turn of pace by Hassan in by PK Pogba. Oh, 
Shot blocked. Is that Chancel and Bemba as well? PK with the cross again. Hector. Hector is quite tall as well for a winger. He can play as a striker. He's like six foot three. He does seem to win a, a fair few headers. He's got decent jumping reach. Six foot three, yeah, heading of 13. He could be a real force at like far post headers. He's out jumping Mounier all the time at the moment. Milan are winning, Juve are winning. Okay. Let's go attacking and let's up the defensive line. Pen him in. Hassan, come on. Pogba, yeah. Uh, not the pass that Hector wanted. What? He better be onside. I think he came from an onside position, personally. Right, so interestingly enough, the score sheet here has given it, which makes me think it's going to be given. Yeah, okay. Pogba, Hector, cuts inside. Whips a great ball in at the far post. Hassan for his first goal for the club with a lovely, simple back post tap and finish. Love it. Love it. Now, come on, let's go. Let's put them to the sword now. Let's see. I'm going to be interested to see if this is a good indicator. of if, So it's not come up here, which makes you think it's going to be disallowed. Oh, no, it's been given. Okay, so that's not a reliable indicator. Hector with the goal, though. Lovely free kick from Garvey. Villarreal beating Stad Rene, Man City now beating Gladbach. Book put hits the bar. Oh man, unlucky, mate. So the two wingers stealing the show at the moment. Oh yeah, Brian Giel as well. Yeah. Or Heel, Giel, Heel, one of them. Gabriel Jesus putting Milan 2-0 up. Hannes Wolf as well. He was someone who, like, in, like, FM17 was, like, wonder kid. <whistles> Great double save from the keeper there because I think he actually tipped that Hector shot onto the bar. It was a disgustingly good shot. Guys, that's right, beating Porto. Would not have uh, seen that one coming. Oh, there's King Erling scoring against Gladbach. What a ledge. We did, just if in case we saw Vyavich, we did just think, mm, would Haaland want to come back? He, he wasn't interested. He wouldn't have been interested in the move if it had uh, been on for him. Shame. Twelve shots for us in the first half. Not a single one for them. And as I said that, they must have literally had a shot on the stroke of half time because it went up to one shot. <laughs> For them it was off target though so so far no shots on target <sighs> nearly through to Makoko sort of peering off a little bit come on encourage 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 and Porto have equalized red Rene and Gladbach have got a goal back Juve 3-0 up Milan 3-0 up trying to get an early feel for the groups and see who we could potentially get you see I'm always obsessed with this because Champions League is just like it's becoming like not an obsession with me in this save, but obviously this is the whole point of the save is get Dortmund the Champions League for the first time since 1997, 25 years ago. 
And uh, yeah, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Could actually be what? If we win it this season, it will be 30 years. 30 years since they won it. Have I got Tijani on the bench? No. Looks like someone is going to have to play. Like Nets is going to have to see the game out. And someone else is going to have to play at the weekend. Let's throw Vlajevic on up top. Garvey can come off for Verts. Just going to drop the lines back a bit now. It's getting towards the end of the game. Players are getting tired. Don't want to concede a jammy consolation goal for them at 2-1, which would make me a little bit twitchy. Hector Vert. Uh, crowded out. Uh, that's a point we could put Bastoni there. Let's just play Bastoni there. Is that over the rail? Pulled it back now against Rene. Looks like it. Where is that game? And that's going to be the game now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just going to point this out. Stad Ren. Stad Rene, unlucky. Pulled it back to 2 all against Villarreal. And then Villarreal scored the 95th minute winner. <laughs> Unlucky. Um, Man City ran right in the end. Juve did as well. Milan are currently on top of our group. Let's look at the schedule, everyone. See when we're going to bring it back. Because given the fact that this is probably going to be the final season, I'm going to try and do a little bit more. Give a little bit more of depth to the videos and to the sort of the progress through this one. So, um, obviously, we will focus on the Champions League. We won't bring it back for that one against Milan. Um, be a bit too soon. We will bring it back for this one against Milan, though, because at this point, that's probably going to be for who's going to come top of the group, really. Um, so we'll be back then for definite. And then, you know what, we'll probably bring it back for Wolfsburg just before the winter break, uh, by which point we will have played, should have played all of our first lot of fixtures. And hopefully we'll have an idea of if we could be on for a treble. So we're currently one point off top, which is joint Wolfsburg and Bayern. So that's definitely very much still, you know, nothing to be concerned about this early on anyway. Bayern are playing fifth place Mainz. And we've got Cologne, Cologne, who are in eighth. So, um, yeah, I think we've got our cup draw as well, actually. We think we're playing Union, Union Berlin, yeah. So, yeah, definitely doable. A treble would be nice to round things off, wouldn't it, everyone? Um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone for sticking with it this far, if you're still here. Obviously, six seasons in, and uh, we've not had much to write home about, really, since that first season, to be honest with you. And we got to the Champions League final when we lost on penalties to Inter. We've had a few league titles since then, granted, but, you know, we would kind of expect to do that with the squad that we've built. So the Champions League is the main one. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. As I said, if you haven't already, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe while you're there. Just click that little button. It means very little to you if you just click that little button. It takes no time at all, but to me, it means a lot. So, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Take care and bye.